Stokes County makes history today with our Charters of Freedom dedication ceremony, celebrating the dedication of these representations of the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. All of you are our honored guests today as we all enjoy the freedom that has been afforded us through these documents. Agreed? I would like to offer a special welcome to our military veterans. Yes. Our Stokes County Board of Commissioners. County manager and Stokes County employees, our guests from the town of Danbury, the town of Walnut Cove, and the city of King, uh, Sheriff Mike Marshall and the Stokes County Sheriff's Department and other law enforcement officials, our Stokes County Court officials and their representatives that are here today, our state and federal officials and their representatives, and I want to also acknowledge the commissioners that initiated this dedication and this project, and those were uh, Commissioner Booth, Commissioner Jones, Commissioner Langford, Commissioner Mendenhall, Commissioner Walker. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to welcome our very special guests, Vance and Mary Jo Patterson, and representatives from Foundation Forward and the Charters of Freedom Organization. At this time, I would like to invite Pastor Chuck Estes from Ronaldo Presbyterian King with our invocation. The Bible 
says that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And so we are thankful for the freedom that we have in Jesus. Father, our liberty is rooted in faith in you and you alone. Our great nation was founded on that faith, a faith that is reflected in these declarations that we hold so dear. And as we stay true to the ideals of life, liberty, and justice for all we know, and we celebrate that the foundation of these ideals is in Jesus Christ. He is the author and finisher of our faith, and it is to Christ that we turn to empower and sustain us ordinary times. We thank you that you are rich in mercy, full of grace, and full of blessing. Bless those that are in authority. Bless them with wisdom and discernment as they need. Bless our land with healing and with peace and with joy. And bless these United States of America to bring glory to your kingdom and honor to your name. The name above all names, Jesus Christ is a little change in the program to make you aware of. The 208th Army Band was originally scheduled to perform the national anthem and provide a free program of music today. And because of the COVID-19 situation, they were not permitted to attend, but they did send uh, their congratulations on this dedication, and uh, they would like to take a rain check and actually uh, perform here on this site at some point in the near future, so we will make you aware of that. At this time, we would like you to stand, court national anthem, uncover, please face the flag as our colors are presented by the King American Legion Post 290, Commander Cliff Kilby. Before I recognize our dignitaries today who will be speaking, today, right at this moment, your life's journey has been appointed this time and this place for all of us to be here because of one word, freedom. We have guest speakers today who will tell their own journey and the significance of these documents in their lives. But I wanted to quickly mention just a little bit about my own journey. I was blessed to be born into a career United States Air Force family. My father served more than 20 years. I was born at Blackwood Air Force Base, Wilford Medical Center Hospital in San Antonio, during the Vietnam War. My parents made it a priority 
to my brothers, my sister, and I to understand the importance of freedom, and those that have lived before us who guarantee the right to freedom. My dad often told me that our country is always a work in progress, and that freedom is not free, but involves great courage and sacrifice. I experienced that sacrifice firsthand when I married my wife, whose brother had been killed in the defense of our country's freedom while serving in the U.S. Army. I encourage you to take advantage of this monument and the Charter of Freedom, to tell your own story to the next generation, and leave a legacy of celebration and education to carry on long after we are gone. However, these charters will remain the foundation of our country and our freedom. Our speakers today, in this order, will include the following. Mayor Janet Witt from the town of Danbury. Mayor Nellie Brown, the town of Walnut Cove. Uh, representing, we're glad to have Mayor Warren here. I do want to acknowledge Mayor Jack Warren. But speaking will be Wesley Carter, who's on the city council with the city of King, and also a United States Marine veteran. For my board of commissioners, Chairman Andy Nicholson. For my board of education, Chairman Mike Rogers, who's also a veteran of the United States Air Force. From the Stokes County Sheriff's Department, Chief Deputy Joey Lemons. From the court system, Judge Tom Langan. Representative Kyle Hall from the North Carolina State House. Um, do we have a representative from Senator Burgers' office that is here? Uh, a representative from Virginia, Congresswoman Virginia Fox's office. A representative from Congressman Patrick McHenry's office. We do have Stephanie Blair, a representative from Senator Tom Lewis's <laughs> office. Thank you all again. Yes, speaker. Thank <laughs> you. 
fabric of this nation. And so, uh, as far as, as, as my journey, I can tell you that without having assurances, the assurances that we have in life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, that everything that I have today, everything that all of us have are able to achieve today cannot be possible. We're not for the foundation that, the, that this country is built upon. And these documents are that foundation. I'm, I really want to uh, just take a chance too to say that this is to be a valuable resource for this county uh, and for Danbury. Um, and I am sure that our school system will be able to take full advantage of this so that uh, our children and our children can uh, learn these valuable lessons. And as we go forward, to tell you that those old ideals, that they are still just as relevant today as they were the days of the end of the people, and that they're just as effective. And uh, thank you. I'm David Taylor, military of Clark Commander. I'd just like to say thank you to the city of Denver, the mayor, and all you fine people for this on. But this is my safe place. I'm just a place I'm not a hero, but I'm surrounded here by heroes. Thank you so much. Two to my wife says, never let me from the fight, stand in a bird fight. So I'm going to make a choice. Please, uh, thank Larry Hansel for the veterans, uh, veterans, Coast County Veterans Service Office. The fly to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud. be here today. It's a blessing to me to be on this special occasion. My name is Yellow Brown, Mayor Warner Cove. My first term in office as a politician, but it's really good to have Kim Greenwood right beside me as city manager. And it's, this, this day is special because my father was a World War II veteran, and my brother is also a veteran. And so, and to all the military, you know, I pray for them, and also to all the the veterans who have served our country. This is history and the making for all the young people that's going to come up before after us. So at this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Greenwood and thank everyone for the board, for the people that's here today, all the people, here, all the people that's here. I just ask the Lord, please don't let it rain. Amen. <laughs> No, I, w I wanted to. I want to read uh, just a phrase because I can't do it justice. But in the Declaration of Independence, it says, "We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness." And it's hard to believe that those words were written you know, over 200 years ago. 
they're so relevant to what we're living through today. And this is a terrible time, uh, economic troubles, this virus, and all the things that are going on, but yet they're, they're just as relevant as they were the day they were written. And I'm thankful to grow up in a country you know, that, that we can live and pursue our happiness. And we have freedom. You know, and and you know, I was told to, to tell a little bit about myself, but I, I grew up on, on Tom Ford Road in, in Stokes County. Grew up poor, uh, you know, didn't, didn't have a whole lot, uh, but, but you know, in this country, um, you know, if you work hard and, and, you, and you trust in God, you, you can accomplish things. Uh, you know, 9/11 changed my life. Uh, it impacted me and, and uh, it, it challenged me to, to want to serve my country, and I did that uh, in the Marines in 2003 and, and, and served a brief time in Iraq in 2005. But but this is the American dream. And we're all living that. We're all um, we're all reaping the benefits that we see that these great men who signed the documents behind us. And I'm just so thankful. I want to point out one man, at, at William Hooper. Uh, he, he was a, a delegate from North Carolina, uh, one, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. One of those names that you just you, you glance over. Uh, but but yet, in, in the Revolutionary War, Cornwallis' army uh, fled back to Wilmington, where William Hooper lived. And... and they hated him so much because he signed this document that they burned his burned his house, burned his estate. He, he was pursued, and they wanted to kill him. And you know that that's just one piece of what the men and, and women who served our country have gone through, not only for this document, but but serving and, and preserving our freedom ever since. I, I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak, and I'm, I'm thankful for the, what these great documents represent. And my three daughters can come here and read them and look at them and realize that the great foundation we have as America. Thank Amen. You. On behalf of the Slaves County Board of Commissioners in Slaves County, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Charles Free Dedication Center for This is something the Slaves County to be proud of. The Charles Freedom are our country's founding documents. The three original documents, the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights are on display in rotunda of the Charles Freedom in Washington, D.C. If anybody had a chance to travel to Washington, D.C. to see them, but not many uh, have not. And now everyone in our county will be have the opportunity to see an important part of, life of their history. It's important that we remember the principles outlined in the founding documents. Our founding fathers were challenged with fighting a war and establishing a government for the people. We still believe in the government by the people and that everyone has the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. What a great week for this the dedication with it leading up to the 4th of July holiday. We have so much to celebrate. We'll be able to remember our history and pass these ideas on the future, future generations. We invite our students to come for field trips, view these documents just as they would in the National Archives. Many our county here today have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution. Thank you to all the men and women who have given all so that we may enjoy these freedoms. This is not taken lightly. I want to thank everyone who made this project happen. This was a collaborative effort between our county and Foundation Board. Thanks to the business who donated materials and time to make this possible. Thanks to the Foundation Board for providing this wonderful gift to Stokes County. And thanks to Stokes County Public Works employees and director Mark Allenheim for all their hard work on making this beautiful site for all to enjoy for many years to come. They have worked especially hard on this project. Thank you to our former Board of Commissioners, including Mr. James Booth, Rhonda Jones, Ernest Langford, Ronnie Mendenhall, and Jimmy Walker for getting this project started. I also want to thank Ms. Shannon Chamber, Mr. Jake Oakley. Also had a big hand in this. Thank you guys as well. I hope all the citizens of Stokes County will enjoy this beautiful month for years to come. And as I told my board earlier in the meeting this week, or last week, 2087 will be open to the time cap to be sure to mark your calendar to be there. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Right, so uh, I was asked to speak about what the, uh, 
age where Cool House Rock, it was a cartoon, every kid loves cartoons, so that was my first exposure. Then you move on and you get to civics class in high school, and you learn it, but you don't appreciate it. That's for a little bit longer, I support those protections and defense in my school. Uh, it was U.S. Navy, nothing against the Air Force. say that public confidence in our founding principles is fading, that the words written on these documents are inapplicable in today's climate, and I have to disagree. We have to endeavor to resist any notion of a sort. In order to continue onward, we have to remember our values and the foundation that our country is built on. As a law enforcement officer, I raised my hand to God. I took an oath to support and maintain the Constitution of the United States. The laws that the legislature passes and that we enforce are not to be inconsistent with the Constitution. Amen. The laws that keep our society just and peaceful are ultimately derived from the Constitution. With it, along with the Bill of Rights, we're able to live in a country that's governed by the rule of law and ordained by God. And as citizens, we have a responsibility to live up to the ideals written on these pages. We have an obligation to pass it on to the next generation. And I hope this space, as others have mentioned, will be a field trip destination 
for our students, especially those studying civics and government, that by reading these words, they can gain a greater appreciation of what makes our country unique. I thank you for allowing me to be a part of this special occasion, this momentous occasion for our county. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. it is that this monument be dedicated to the same week that in 1776, 56 men met in Philadelphia, risking their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to vote to separate our ties to Britain. In the Declaration of Independence, our founding fathers laid out a novel idea that all men were created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among these being life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This monument behind me serves as a testament to how truly exceptional America and our people are. We are the people, we the people, are governed by our United States Constitution, the world's oldest constitution still in use. Because of the determination of early North Carolina state leaders who stood their ground and refused to ratify this constitution until our rights and liberties were expressly guaranteed, we have a bill of rights to create specific prohibitions on governmental power. While this monument serves as that testament to American exceptionalism, it also serves as a reminder of our nation's founding and history, both the good and the bad. And while the Constitution established our government of the people, by the people, and for the people, while it failed to guarantee women's suffrage until the 19th Amendment in 1920, this document also expressly state, stated that some American citizens were only three fifths of persons and that people can own other people until those cruel and unjust errors were amended by the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment in 1865, 68, and 70. We learn from these documents through this monument of where we've been, where we're going, and we continue to build that more perfect union our founders envisioned. Thank you. Contact our office. 
us if you want to come see the real documents in Washington or if you want a tour uh, because we would love to do it because this is a wonderful place. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I bring remarks from Senator Tom Tillis. Unfortunately, his schedule does not permit him to be here today as he is up in Washington, D.C., but I do bring some remarks from him, so I will share those with you. So we are pleased, we are pleased to welcome everyone gathered here today. North Carolina is truly fortunate as well as our country to have these wonderful documents that have provided so much guidance to our nation. It is going to be a privilege for the students in this county as well as others to come and see these documents firsthand. I wish you all the best for a wonderful event. Sincerely, Senator Tom Tillis. Similarly, please do not hesitate to reach out to our office if we can be of any assistance. If you wish to come up to visit Washington, D.C., if you have any issues with any federal agency. I've had the wonderful privilege in my role to get to know some wonderful residents throughout the state, such as Mr. Taylor, who spoke earlier. I've had the wonderful privilege to work with him to assist him through our office with getting his military records. That is something that is important. That is part of your history, your father, brother, mother, sister, whoever may have served in our military. These are items that are part of our history, and it's wonderful to be here today to see this history honored. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, freedom is not free, but requires great sacrifice and no one represents great sacrifice more than Vance and Mary J. Patterson. Since 2013, through Foundation Forward, they have made it their life mission to celebrate and educate communities for the charters of freedom and have been the primary funding source for 28 charters of freedom sites across the country. Please welcome to Stokes County our special guests, Vance and Mary J. Patterson. See if this goes any better. Is there anything coming out of the speaker over here? Evidently not. Right. How about this speaker? Can y'all hear this one better? All right, good. Uh, we did a little work on the weather to get rid of the heat. We kind of overcorrected. Believe it or not, there's some nice blue sky over here. So if everybody can lean your thoughts to the left a little bit, maybe we can bring that in. I am so proud of you all for being here today, for making the effort. My question is, are you ready to be part of history? Because we're going to dedicate your Charters of Freedom setting here. It's going to be here for the next 300 to 500 years, and your, answer, your future generations are going to know you are here. My name is Vance Patterson. I'm from Burke County. That's in the western part between Hickory and Asheville. I'm a father of four, married 45 years to my wife, Mary Jo. I'm a businessman. I've got a company, you started a company that makes industrial fans. We actually make things out of metal, ship them across the country and around the world. I am a proud American manufacturer. I'm going to tell you a little about the inspiration behind Foundation Forward, uh, what brought your, your uh, Charters of Freedom here to Stokes County. I'm going to tell you a little about the setting itself, and then I'm going to make you a challenge, which I hope you will take with you. About eight years ago, Mary Jo and I were up in Washington, D.C. We had some free time, so we decided to go to the National Archives, because we'd never seen the Declaration of Independence in the Constitution before. Well, if you've been there, you find your, that flash is not lightning. That's, uh, somebody taking a picture of uh, if you've been there, you find yourself wandering down these hallways looking at different displays. And then you go into this large room. You walk through these big bronze gates into a rotunda. And there are the founding documents on the other side. Declaration of Independence on the left. Four pages of the Constitution in the middle. And the Bill of Rights on the right. This is when we learned that these are known as the Charters of Freedom. Now, one of the things I liked was that once you got into the rotunda, there were no lines. You just wander around looking at different exhibits. And when you get a chance, you step up and look at the 
founding documents. And I'll never forget the first time I saw the Declaration of Independence, something our founding fathers had actually pinned. And then they saw their signatures, their real handwritten signatures. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Rutledge, Wilson, and the others. I just got goosebumps. And then when we got a chance, we moved over and saw the first page of the U.S. Constitution. And those three words, we the people. I got a lump in my throat. I looked over and Mary Jo was wiping tears out of her eyes. It was really an emotional experience for us. Well, the following year, back in Burke County, I got to thinking about that experience and a thought came to me. What if we could duplicate that experience and bring it back to the citizens of Burke County? So I told Mary Jo about it and she got excited. We started working on a project and it turned out to be an education project. And the scope was to build design and build a replica of the displays in the National Archives. Put it in a central location in Burke County. It had to have high visibility, high foot traffic, and easy access for school children and veterans. Well, it took two years to get this done, even though it was a gift for Mary Jo and I to the county. See, well, there were a number of problems. One being, and this was kind of major, there are no drawings available of what's up in Washington in the National Archives. No dimensions. No measurements, nothing. So we had, uh, after we got approval from a late night joint meeting between the Burke County Commissioners and Morgan's and City Council, Mary Jo and I got back in the car the next morning, drove back up to Washington. You see, we'd only seen these documents once. When we walked into the rotunda, and now they won't let you take out a tape measure and start measuring a national treasure. But we had a plan. We walked in, and Mary Jo went one way, and I went another. And if this is still on, good. I walked up to the U.S. Constitution at the end, and I did this. And I was right in the middle. Meanwhile, Mary Jo is walking all the way up to the settings, turning around and facing the crowd. And she is marking on her body the different elevations. And then we left before anybody started asking questions. <laughs> so I tell people, while your setting here may not be exactly what's up in Washington, keep in mind it's based on two paces of a short guy and three marks on my wife's body. <laughs> we do have our ways. Well, it was such a great experience doing that first setting that we decided to do another one. And the second one went in Cherokee County, downtown Murphy. It was dedicated on September 17, 2014, on uh, uh, Constitution Day. And back up a little bit, because I didn't tell you about our dedication. We dedicated ours on July 2nd, 2014. It was the first Charters of Freedom setting outside of Washington, D.C. The second one went downtown Murphy. The third one was a gift of Buncombe County, downtown Asheville. Now, during this time, we decided to set up a foundation. 501c3 because we knew we were going to be doing more. The principles of this foundation are number one education. Education in American history and civics. So people know how government is meant to serve we the people. Number two is access. Not everybody can get to Washington to go to the National Archives. It took Mary Jo and I over 60 years to get there the first time. So we want to provide access in each community to see these documents in a proper setting. And number three is community. Stokes County and Danbury now have a place to gather to celebrate, to honor, and to reflect. To date, as stated earlier, we have placed and dedicated now 29 Charters of Freedom settings across the country. In North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, uh, Nebraska, South Dakota, and as far west as Carson City, Nevada. We've got five more to dedicate now. We start next next month on one up in Wasilla, Alaska. Let me tell you a little about your setting here. One of the things I learned in life is that if you want a setting or a monument to last, you put more underground than above ground. This is not a tip over monument. Your foundation goes down three and a half feet. It is solid, reinforced, reinforced poured concrete. It then comes up into a solid core. 
Just the foundation and the core of that centerpiece weighs over 38,000 pounds, over 19 tons. It's then surrounded by four inches of brick and mortar. There are six documents displayed. All are life-sized, and each is on quarter-inch etched bronze and weighs over 60 pounds. The documents are in chambers covered by a half-inch of treated polycarbonate, unbreakable. Please don't try it. There's an emblem on the front, as you, or a medallion, as you can see on the front of this stand, which is very special. We commissioned some artists across the country to come up with this design. The eagle represents the Declaration of Independence, proud, bold, defiant. There are seven stars above the eagle, which represent the seven articles of the U.S. Constitution. And there are ten stars under the eagle, which represent the ten first approved amendments, your Bill of Rights. As I said earlier, this setting is built to last 300 to 500 years. Now, people ask us, why are we doing this? And we tell them, yes, it's very, it's, it's very expensive, but we believe it's more important than money. We believe this gives us a direct link to our founding fathers by helping to preserve what it is they gave, they gave this country, a government to serve and protect we the people. We learned that we had two founding fathers who were very big on education. Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States, actually penned most of the uh, Declaration of Independence, and Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin, with us today in the crowd, thank you, was an inventor, he was a scientist, he was an author, a publisher, and he was truly a sage. He is the one they would go to if they really got stuck on a problem for his wisdom. These two believed that in order to have a free and independent country, you must understand how government works, that you cannot control what you do not understand. Thomas Jefferson in 1787 said, educate and inform the whole mass of the people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. And James Madison, a five foot four inch virtual rock star of his era wrote in 1822, a people who mean to be their own governors must arm themselves with the power knowledge gives. You wouldn't believe how many people come up to us when we're building these settings and say, that's it, just four pages to the constitution. And we say, that's it. All of our government and laws are based on those four pages. You wouldn't believe how many people don't know that the first 10 amendments are our Bill of Rights. I imagine there are people in the crowd today that are hearing that for the first time. You see, education. Now you've probably noticed that I haven't been calling this a monument. The definition of a monument is a memorial to an individual or to honor an event. And this is not a memorial. This is an active, hands-on educational supplement for your school's curriculum. Imagine, if you will, teachers bringing their third, fourth, and fifth grade classes down here to Danbury, to your Charters of Freedom setting, for annual field trips. And while they're here, they'll learn about a little about the Founding Fathers, a little about the documents, and also about how government is meant to work. And while they're here, they can learn about state and local government and local heroes. This is happening all across the country now. In these communities, they have their own charters free. And these children love these field trips. It's active. It's hands-on. And they are memorable life experiences for them. It's going to start happening here in Stokes County now. There are 3,142 counties, boroughs, parishes, independent cities, census zones, and the District of Columbia in the United States. Our long-term goal as a foundation is to place a Charters of Freedom setting in as many of those communities as possible over the next 10 years. Our short-term goal is to do all 100 counties of North Carolina and then do all 46 counties of South Carolina so that people across the country are saying, what is going on in the Carolinas? Our hope is that our future generations will grow up in communities that have their own Charters of Freedom settings that they'll no longer just be talking about the Constitution and Bill of Rights in Washington. They'll be talking about their Constitution, 
and their Bill of Rights, the ones they grew up with right here in Stokes County. Now for the challenge. Our founding fathers were challenged by the greatest force on earth, the British Empire. They rebelled, they revolted, they protested, and then they fought a war. And all that while, they were setting up a government that is still in effect over 230 years later and replicated by over 65% of the countries around the world. Mark Dallahan and Andy Nicholson and the Board of Commissioners of Stokes County were challenged with bringing a Charters of Freedom setting here and getting it dedicated. And they have met their challenge. Your challenge actually started about three years ago. Mary Jo and I had just finished with the dedication at Hanover College in Southern Indiana. And we were getting ready to leave the campus center and I looked across and I saw this guy I said, I, I need to go thank this guy again. A guy named Ron Wells, African-American uh, facilities engineer, who had helped me a lot during the uh, setup and the dedication. So I walked across the campus center and I walked up and I was shaking Ron's hand. I said, Ron, thanks again for all you did to help me. And he said, thank you for making this donation this contribution for our community. And I said what I usually say, well, you're welcome, and please make sure everybody uses it after we're gone. And he said, Mr. Patterson, I took my son over last night, and we had the talk. And I said, Ron, that means more to me than anything anybody's ever said. Thank you. So here is your challenge. You bring your child, your grandchild, your niece, your nephew, or other family member down here to your Charters of Freedom Center. And you tell them, like Ron Wells did, about their freedoms and their rights, and how those rights and freedoms give them advantage over the rest of the world to pursue their passions, to chase their dreams, to accomplish their goals, and get out of life what it is they want to get out of life. You do that. And as far as Mary Jo and I are concerned, and the rest of Foundation Ford, we'll call it even. Thank you. And they're getting a little soggy up here. Will Mary Jo and Andy Nicholson please come up? The Charters of Freedom setting, located at your government center, Danbury, North Carolina, is hereby gifted from Vance and Mary Jo Patterson of Burton County, North Carolina, to the children, veterans, and citizens of Stokes County, North Carolina. All rights, responsibilities, and care for this setting, displaying the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, are hereby transferred to Stokes County this day, July 1st, 2020. Yeah, they really don't know what to say. Uh, this is overwhelming, and to hear it's going to be here for the next three, five hundred years. Uh, I have five kids of my own. And uh, especially our little two and a half year old who marks on stuff all the time, I make sure she'll bring a mark with her here. But just to show her what everything is right here means. And uh, yeah, I, I just can't thank the Charles for praying enough. Thank you guys so much. All right, uh, we've got two more quick things to do, and that blue weather is getting even closer. So. Probably going to be really humid by the time this is over. Um, if the cannoneers will uh, please move over to where Perry is. Um, in the back, I need to tell you about the time capsule. In the back of the uh, center setting is a vault. In that vault is going to be a time capsule. And in the time capsule will be letters and memorabilia from this era. It's going to be letters from, uh, well, from the veterans groups, 
from uh, law enforcement, from the education groups, uh, from the county commissioners and, and different uh, administrators of the county, and one from me. Uh, along with other memorabilia, and that vault is going to be sealed up in about the next four or five months. It won't be opened until September 17, 2087, the 300th anniversary of the U.S. Constitution. All vaults will be opened the same day, so it should be very interesting as to what's in those vaults. Now, if you're here and there's any problem opening that vault, well, I gave the uh, combination to the county commissioner of Chairman, so you know who had it last. <laughs> All right, we're gonna. Last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do a cannon salute. Back when uh, we first did the first dedication back in 2014, I wanted to do a cannon salute, but I didn't know how many times to fire a cannon. I knew 21 times was too many. So, being an education uh, organization, I did some research and uh, learned that uh, the cannon salute began, or the cannon salutes began back in the 1600s when a ship would be pulling into port. The port wouldn't know that the ship was uh, in any, it was hostile or not. So the ship would turn its guns to sea and fire seven rounds. Well, the port, having more cannon and more uh, powder, would respond three in time. So that's where the 21-gun salute came from. Well, again, I knew that was too much. So then I remembered that we've done business over in Scotland. And if you've been to Edinburgh, the Scottish mark the time of day with their cannon. See, and this is a story told by the Scottish. They liked the way the British fired 12 rounds at noon, and so the ship's captains and clerks could uh, set their clocks. Well, the Scottish, being Scottish, reasoned, why shoot 12 rounds at noon when we can wait till 1 o'clock and save 11 rounds? So every day at 1 o'clock, there's a howitzer up on the hill in the old fort at Edinburgh that goes off. So I knew my number was somewhere between 1 and 21, and I decided on 7, partly because of history, but also because there are 7 articles in the U.S. Constitution. We are going to fire one round for each article of the Constitution. Perry, are my cannoneers ready? Drum roll, please. Article 1 defines the legislative branch composed of the House of Representatives and the Senate to describe their powers and responsibilities. Article 2 defines the executive branch, the qualifications for president and vice president, their powers, responsibilities, and means of removal from office. Article 3 sets up the judicial branch. The Supreme Court and the lower court system that protects the right of trial by jury and defines treason. Article 4 gives the states the right to make and carry out their own laws related to the people and problems of their state, so long as those laws do not conflict with the U.S. Constitution. Article 5 outlines the process of amending the U.S. Constitution. Article 6 sets the status of the United States Constitution as the supreme law of the land, to which all leaders, including the legislative, executive, and judicial, must be loyal. Article 7 addresses the ratification declares that the United States Constitution should take effect if nine of 13 states ratify it. Children, veterans, citizens of Stokes County, I give you your charters of freedom. Which concludes our dedication ceremony. Please come up and meet Mr. and Mrs. Patterson and enjoy the Charters of Freedom. Thank you, Stokes County.
everyone, if you would like to be part of our mission going forward, we have a policy that we call our pay it forward program. Any of the pavers that you see on the ground in our field of honor here in front of the Constitution can be purchased uh, for a $100 donation. You can commemorate your family, your business, a civic group, a loved one who served in the military or a first responder. They are four by eight bricks for $100. We also have eight by eight brick or eight by eight granite pavers that can be purchased as well. So there are forms underneath the tent as well as some of us up around the Constitution will have some forms as well. Thank you very much.